Hi there, in this video we're going to take a look at an important kind of calculation that you need to be able to do with uh, single and three phase transformers. However, most of the time this calculation is going to be asked of you for three phase transformers. And that is to calculate uh, line currents and phase currents when the transformer is operating at full load. So let's take a look at the example and unpack it step by step. So we're told here that a delta star transformer, so we know that the primary side is connected delta and the secondary side is connected star, uh, is supplied with a voltage of 2200 volts and has a ratio of 2200 to 380. So the line voltage on the, pri on the primary side is 2200 volts and the line voltage on the secondary side is 380 volts and we're told importantly that it is rated at 66 kilovolt amperes which means that it is going to be able to operate at a total apparent power of 66 kilovolt amperes. That's not real power or active power, that is apparent power. Remember that apparent power is equal uh, to all of the power in the system, whereas active power is only equal to that portion of the power that is doing useful work. And it is assumed to run at 100% efficiency. Most of the time you can make that assumption in these calculations. Sometimes they will give you an efficiency ratio and what you'll need to do with that is to simply multiply the rated uh, KVA by that efficiency ratio to find out how much power gets transformed from the primary to the secondary side. They ask us four particular questions. The first one of which is to calculate the secondary phase voltage. So before we have a look at that, let's have a look again at the information that we've been given. We're told that it is a delta star connected transformer. We're told that the uh, the line voltage on the primary side is 2200 volts and we told that the ratio of the line voltages primary to secondary is 2200 to 380 and we're told that the uh, apparent power here the rated uh, power for this transformer is 66 kilovolt amperes so part a asks us to calculate the secondary phase voltage well that's pretty easy for us to do uh, we know that the secondary side is connected in star and therefore we know that the line voltage on the secondary side is equal to the phase voltage on the secondary side multiplied by the square root of 3 uh, because it's star connection on the secondary side and so the phase voltage on the secondary side is simply the line voltage on the secondary side divided by the square root of 3 well, that's equal to 380 volts that we, we've been given divided by the square root of 3 and we get 219.39 volts. That's part A done. Let's now have a look at part B where we start to look at the, in this case, the primary line current at full load. And we're going to need to derive some equations uh, in order to answer this question, but you'll be able to use those equations whenever you are asked to determine primary or secondary line currents at full load. So we know that in single phase uh, that uh, the apparent power is the voltage times by the current. Remember real power would be the voltage times the current multiplied by the power factor or the cosine of the angle between the apparent and real power. But for apparent power it's voltage times current. And we can rearrange that equation to get that the current is equal to the apparent power divided by the voltage. Nothing new or interesting over there. In three phase, however, um, the same equation can be used, but that is the overall condition on the three phase transformer. That's across all three phases or all three coils. But if we looked at each phase individually, well, we need to divide that apparent power by 3 if we're looking at the voltage and the current in a particular phase uh, because the apparent power is across all three phases so each of those phases is going to have an equal share of the apparent power so we divide the apparent power by 
by 3. And that gives us a very important result that the current in a phase is the apparent power divided by 3 divided by the voltage in a phase. All right, well, we can then write that the, the uh, current in the phase is equal to the parent power divided by 3 divided by the voltage in the phase, a very important result. And we can rearrange that equation to get that the apparent power divided by 3, that's this numerator over at the top here, is equal to uh, the uh, current times the voltage in that particular phase. And so we can rewrite by uh, rearranging this equation that the apparent power across everything is the voltage times the current in a phase multiplied by 3. Or, you know, we've got three phases, so we're going to have to multiply that by 3 to get the power over the entire transformer. But now, with that result, let's have a look at what happens across the lines. Uh, and let's see how connecting those lines delta versus star affects the, our final formulae. So we know that in delta that the line voltage is going to be equal to the phase voltage, but that the line current is going to be the phase current multiplied by the square root of 3. So if we just do some uh, substitutions here, um, we can substitute in this equation to get this equation. So this phase voltage is going to be just the line voltage, so that's where that comes from over there, but this phase current is going to be equal to the line current divided by the square root of 3. We're just simply rearranging that equation there. Okay, so let's take that equation and do some mathematical manipulations. We can get the line current on its own by uh, multiplying both sides of the equation by the square root of 3, which we've done over there. And now we can do some more manipulations. We can take this uh, apparent power divided by 3, that's over there, and the uh, line voltage is in the denominator, multiplied by this root 3, which is actually just root 3 over 1, we can get this term over here, root 3 divided by the line voltage. Now we can take the apparent power and the line voltage, everything's being multiplied, and just make a convenient little fraction over there, and multiply it by the square root of 3 divided by 3. But just to show you how we simplify this, I have rewritten the square root, I've rewritten 3, sorry, as root 3 times root 3. Well, that is what the square root of 3 would be. So um, root 3 times root 3 will give us back 3, which then very nicely shows us that we can cancel a root 3 in the numerator with a root 3 in the, in the denominator. That's just another form of 1. And so we land up with this very important equation that the line current is equal to the apparent power divided by the line voltage multiplied by the square root of 3. Okay, We've got the apparent power still left in the numerator. This and this have cancelled to just leave that term in the denominator, and we still have the line voltage in the denominator. So that has gone, and that has gone to be replaced by that term over there. So we've got the apparent power in the numerator, We've got the line voltage in the denominator, and we've got this term of the square root of 3 also in the denominator. All right, so that's what we get if the um, coils are connected in delta configuration. Let's see what happens in star configuration. Oh, sorry, before we go there, we can just rearrange this equation to get another important result where we've got the apparent power on its own, and that is equal to the line voltage times the line current times the square root of 3. Now you don't need to remember both of those, you can just remember one or the other, and it's very easy to rearrange one or the other to get the other equation. All right, but on to star now. So in star, we know that the line voltage is equal to the phase voltage multiplied by the square root of 3, but that the line current is equal to the phase current. So let's do exactly the same process and see what equations we get at the end. So doing our substitutions to get from here to here, uh, phase uh, current is just the line current, so we can make that simple substitution. But the phase voltage is the line voltage divided by the square root of 3. Well, we know we've got this mathematical trick that if we've got a fraction divided by a fraction, we can take the fraction in the denominator, find its inverse, in other words, turn it upside down, and multiply it by the fraction in the numerator, which is exactly what we've done here. 
We've taken the fraction in the denominator, turned it on its head, inverted it. You know, the denominator becomes the numerator, and the numerator becomes the denominator, and then multiplied it by the fraction in the original numerator, and we get this. Well, I hope that you can see that basically that expression there is exactly the same as this expression over there. So we can simplify it in exactly the same way. We can take this number 3 in the uh, denominator and split it up as root 3 times root 3 so that we can cancel the root 3 at the top with one of the root 3's at the bottom. And we are left with, oh my goodness, look at that. The line current is equal to the apparent power divided by the line voltage multiplied by the square root of 3. We have exactly the same results as before. So it doesn't matter whether the coils are connected delta or star. We've only got one equation to memorize. Line current is equal to the apparent power divided by the line voltage multiplied by root 3. Or the apparent power is line voltage multiplied by line current multiplied by the square root of 3. So we've got some important results. And remember, you don't have to memorize both of these equations. So for phase, let's just write a note here. This is for phase. So if we're dealing with phase voltages and currents, um, the phase current is the apparent power divided by 3, divided by the phase voltage. Or in the phase, the total apparent power is the phase voltage times the phase current for each phase multiplied by all three phases. Or if we're looking at the line, well then, the line voltage is the apparent power across the entire transformer divided by the line, sorry, the line current is the entire apparent power across the transformer divided by the line voltage multiplied by the square root of 3. Or the apparent power across the entire voltage is the line current multiplied by, sorry, the line voltage multiplied by the line current multiplied by the square root of 3. Okay, so with those results, we can now get on to answering our initial question. Calculate the primary line current at full load. Okay, so we're going to use this equation here for the lines, okay? Remember, the primary line current is equal to apparent power divided by line voltage multiplied by the square root of 3. We know that the apparent power we've given is 66 kilovolt amperes. We know that the line of voltage on the primary side is 2200 volts, also given. We can just plug these values directly into our equation. And we're going to get this. But just a quick note here. Notice your units, kilovolt amperes and volts. We need to get either this into kilovolts or this into just simply volt amperes. I have elected in this particular instance to multiply this by a thousand to get the units as just volt amperes. So now our units are the same. And we get a final answer of 17.32 amps. You know you're getting it right because in a sense, this is not exactly correct, but in a sense, the units of voltage cancel out, leaving us just the units of amps. All right, so that is part B, calculate the primary line current. Part C is calculate the primary phase current at full load. Well, let's use our phase uh, equation. So the phase current, primary side, is equal to the parent power divided by 3, all divided by the phase voltage on the primary side in this case. We know that the apparent power is 66 kilovolt amperes. Because the primary side, remember, is connected in delta, the uh, line voltage is the same as the phase voltage. So the phase voltage is also 2200 volt volts. Plug those values into the equation and we get a nice lovely answer there of 10 amps. That is the phase current when the uh, transformer is operating at full load. But uh, we can also get this in another way. We know the relationship between the uh, line current and the phase current when connecting in delta. The line current is equal to the phase current multiplied by the square root of 3. So let's use this formula and see if we get the same result. If we don't, we've got a problem somewhere. Um, the phase current is equal to the line current divided by the square root of 3. Well, we know that the line current, we saw that in, in part B, was 17.32 amps. Well, if we divide that by the square root of 3, we get 9.99999 amps. Well, that's for all intents and purposes 10 amps. We get the same answer. Everything is hunky-dory. We know that we have calculated our primary phase current correctly. 
All right, last one. Question D, calculate the secondary phase and line currents at full load. Okay, secondary phase and line currents. So let's have a look at the secondary phase current first. This is our phase formula. Um, we know that the parent power is 66 kilovolt amperes. We know that this doesn't change because we're dealing with a 100% efficient transformer. So all the power on the uh, primary side gets transferred to the secondary side. There's no reduction in the kilovolt amperes. If, let's just for example, just make a note, if the efficiency was say 80%, then we would only experience, the secondary side would only experience 80% of this apparent power. So we'd have to multiply the primary apparent power by 0.8 to get the secondary apparent power. But because we're dealing with 100%, we don't need to worry about doing that. All right. We also know that the secondary phase voltage, we calculated that in part A, is 219.39 volts. Plug those into our equation. And we get that, um, oh sorry, just before, uh, before we go on, I've in this case elected to again convert that into volt amperes by multiplying it by a thousand. And we get that the uh, phase current on the secondary side is 100.28 amps. We also need to work out the line current. Well, the line current, because the secondary side is connected in star, the line current is equal to the phase current. So very simply, the line current is also equal to 100.28 amps. Very important question, example to have gone through. Make sure that you understand everything that we've done in this. Make sure that you Let's just go back here. Remember these formulae. Uh, this one will give you uh, phase currents when you're working with phase currents and voltages. This one when you're working with line currents and voltages. It doesn't matter whether we're connecting in delta or star, the equations are the same. For my, my preference is to remember these versions. I think those are easier to remember. And then I just quickly rearrange them to get the currents. Uh, this is also quite useful if you need to work out the line or the phase voltages. You can just rearrange those to get the voltages on their own and solve for voltage. Uh, but you can make the decision whichever, solution, uh, whichever equation uh, you want to memorize.